and welcome to book 10 of the Aeneid. Uh, let's begin. So we start off with Jupiter holding a meeting because he is just extremely pissed off at this point. He is done with everyone's shit. And he's like, all right. So in case everyone forgot, as your king, remember, that's what I am, your king. I explicitly said, don't make Italy fight with the Trojans because they'll, they'll get a fight when Carthage decides to start a whole really big war with them. Not just one, in fact, two. Two whole wars. So, you know, actually, is it three? It might be three. But what have you all gone and done? You've ignored me, as per usual, even though I am, and I will emphasise this again, your king, you've gotten yourselves involved, and now you've fucked everything up. And I don't know if the fates are going to be happy with this. And I don't want to know if they're going to be happy with this. I don't want to be the one to bear the brunt of that. So can we please, please try to keep the treaty now and stop interfering and stop pissing off the fates because I don't want another complaint for them. I am sick and tired. And Venus perks up and is like, um, listen... They wouldn't be fighting if they didn't have to defend themselves from the Rutulians who are now inside their walls. They don't really have a choice to fight and I don't have any choice but to like defend my son and his descendants because they are in deep shit right now and I kind of want them to survive because they're my family, remember? Um, and just to let you know, it has been like this. The ho their whole journey to Italy, everyone's been attacking them, so obviously I'm going to want to defend them. Even though, and this has been happening to them, even though they have done everything that you have commanded, but your goddamn wife is such a little bitch that, and can't get rid of a grudge that she can't let them, let them rest for five seconds. So, excuse me for wanting to defend them when the, when the queen of the gods is attacking them. You know, maybe I'm just giving them a fair chance. But please, please, if this is what you want, can you at least let me save Ascanius from this battle so I can ensure that my son's family continues in their legacy. And then I won't interfer interfere anymore, I promise. Thank you. And then at this accusation, Juno pipes up and is like, um, <coughs> okay, excuse me, but I wasn't the one who encouraged the Trojans to start a war with the Italians. That was all on them. They decided that. And also, may I remind you that you've been helping them at the expense of the people I also care about. Did you forget about Dido? I didn't forget about Dido. So um, don't think you're innocent in all of this. Also, I think it's only fair that I act in their interests because of this. Also, didn't you start the whole Trojan War? in the first place you know that you're kind of the reason that they're in this mess in the first place also i'm the queen of the gods so try me again bitch and we'll see what fucking happens uh, and so everyone starts going off everyone's arguing before jupiter is like quiet okay so can we let everyone just listen for a second listen to me for five seconds at least can we at least agree just for today that we don't get involved anymore and just kind of let them do whatever and so so it's all on them what happens okay and we don't have to worry about any complications involving us okay let's just leave them to it for t just for today and see what happens and everyone is like okay fine so then we cut back to the battlefield and the Rutulians are still fighting and the trojans are still suffering as per usual and they're, they're literally losing so hard that they have to fight from their walls and towers with a thin line of defenders in front. It's getting desperate. And among these defenders is Ascanius, who's apparently just, like, glowing with beauty among the rest of them. He's so beautiful. He's so amazing. Oh. And meanwhile, while all of this is happening, Aeneas is sailing back to them all, along with Tarkon and the Etruscans, who is, he has also recently recruited among with the other ones. Who I've forgotten what they're called. Evander. Evander and his people. That's who I'm talking about. Um, and as his sailing palace is like by his side. Asking him about literally everything from the stars to their course. Like a very, very overexcited child. It's very cute. And then we get a catalogue of ships. Which is just the most riveting thing to read. Like literally all you need to know is that it's a way, 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 way shorter ripoff of the catalogue of soldiers from the Iliad, which, unlike here, takes up nearly a whole book. 
It's the longest, most dullest part of the Iliad, and Virgil decided to make it, albeit very short version of this, but it's clear at this point that he is just saying, listen, I'm making the Iliad better because I made their catalogue way shorter. I'm just that much better at Homer, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, while Aeneas is working on the tiller, whatever that is, he is greeted by some nymphs. But not just any nymphs. No, these are the ones that used to be ships. Remember when that shit happened? I sure do. It was weird. And it gets weirder here, folks. Because Cymodocia, I think that's how you say her name, who is one of the nymphs, is like, Yo, dude, you're awake. Sick. So we used to be your ships, but now I'm here to tell you that your son is in deep trouble back at camp and Turnus is blocking your new troops from joining them. But don't worry, just just be aware that that's happening. But don't worry, you'll defeat him just fine. Just get ready soon, okay? See ya before she gives the ship a little shove forward. And at first Aeneas, quite understandably, is kind of just standing there in shock, unable to say anything. And he's just like, what, what the f- what huh what just happened um and he's like wait so some of my ships got got turned to nip when did this happen because remember that he wasn't here when this happened so he's in even more shock because of this um but after he gets over his shock which he needs to do quite quickly he prays to Sibylle to aid him in battle and then he approaches camp and he gives the Trojan a signal by flashing his shield and everyone goes absolutely ham like oh my god Aeneas is back finally my king uh, then the Rutulians spot him, and Aeneas is just literally exerting straight fire. Like, he's just on fire. He's on fire. I don't know what Virgil has with fire. Maybe he's a pyromaniac, and we just don't know. This book is clearly proof of that, but maybe Virgil just has a fire kink. I don't know. Uh, but Turnus looks at this, and he doesn't care, because Turnus never cares. And he's instead like, Listen, guys, this is our chance. Let's get them while they're still leaving their ships, when they're still, like, kind of getting their bearings, and then we can get a head start on them. Come on, boys. Uh, so as the allies are landing their ships, Tarkon, who is the leader of the Etruscans, tells his men to moor their ships straight onto the earth, which everyone does successfully, apart from Tarkon's own ship, which is just really sad. It gets split in half, and most of his men die. It's the most ironic thing to happen in this epic so far and then the fighting begins uh, so Aeneas obviously is straight in there and kills off a lot of the Retunians best men such as Theron who we are told is the tallest one so you know Aeneas is doing well and he kills many 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 other people like there's a whole list of them Aeneas is just done with everyone he is his fuming and then he's attacked by the seven sons of Phorcus all at once uh, so most of the spears that they, most of the spears that they throw at him just bounce off of him, or are deflected by Venus, who who is still helping him, even though Jupiter said not to. But I guess we're just going to ignore that. Um, before he tells Achates, who is like the person nearby, to gather some spears for him, and then he throws a sphere. Sphere? Why do I keep saying sphere? A spear that goes through Meon's shield through his breastplate. And into his chest. Then, Maon's brother, Alcanor, tries to help him, but his arm gets torn off by another one of Aeneas' spears. Because Aeneas just isn't taking any breaks, and then a lot more people are killed. Meanwhile, while this is all happening, Pallas sees his men retreating because they don't know how to fight on foot because most of them are cavalrymen and they're just. They're very overwhelmed, so they're retreating. And he's like, don't give up, guys. These Rutulians are men, not gods. You've got to use your swords. Also, there's only sea back there. So unless you're going to swim back to your home, you might as well fight. There is nowhere to retreat back to. And then he throws himself into battle like the badass bitch he is. And so he kills another bunch of guys, as does Lausus, who is Mezentius' son. And they start to they start to approach each other. They're about to duel. But not before Juturna, who is Turnus' sister, is like, My brother, Turnus, you need to take Lausus' place. And he's like, Fuck yeah, Pallas is mine. And so Pallas, as Turnus approaches Pallas, Pallas looks at Turnus up and down and is like, 
I ain't afraid of you. Either I kill you or I get a shit ton of glory. Or you kill me and I die a glorious be- death. So either way, it's a win-win for me. And Turnus is like, <laughs> Lamau, okay, fight me, bitch. And so they start to fight. Um, Pallas prays to Hercules before his first attack, being like, please let my spear hit... Spear... <laughs> Please let my spear hit Turnus. But because the gods can't help them today, Hercules is like crying like, Fuck my man, I can't help you, why? And Jupiter is like, it'd be like that sometimes, my dude. How do you think I felt about Sarpedon? I couldn't help him then. You just gotta suck it up, my dude. Shit happens. Uh, so the spear only just grazes Turnus' shoulder and Turnus is like, <laughs> lol, okay, watch this. And his spear p- pierces right through Pallas' chest just straight in instant kill and as Pallas is bleeding out Turnus is like hey Arcadians take this body back to Evander and take this as a warning not to cross me again bitch and then takes off Pallas's baldric which shows the murder of a group of young men killed by Clonus in their wedding chambers so that's foreshadowing I guess in a way and at this point Virgil comes in and is like lol Turnus is gonna pay for this later don't worry but damn this death is sad son and then Aeneas hears about this and the Trojans being on the brink of disrupt, disrupt, bleh, destruction and he goes absolutely ape shit Achilles style he is we're coming back with the parallels from the Iliad but like he goes probably even worse than Achilles I'd say um so first of the things that he does he captures four sons of Salmo and four sons of Uvens to sacrifice to Pallas and may I remind you all humor the sacrifice is still super not chill in the Roman times so just keep that in mind and then he goes for Magus who dodges it he like dives under his spear and begs him to spare him his life for the sake of his father and son and offers him money to spare him but Aeneas is like no, you can keep your money. I'm out for blood, bitch. And takes off his helmet and just kills him right there and then. No mercy. And then his killing spree continues. And he is... He's brutal. If you want to read it, you better have a strong stomach. Because it, it's hard, man. It sucks. Uh, meanwhile, Jupiter is like... Fuck, you know, you are right. Venus really is just helping him out a lot, huh? She really is kind of the reason why they're not failing as hard as they should and Juno is like "Mm, no shit honey you should have just listened to me first as your wife and you should definitely let me rescue my boy Turnus and keep him safe for his dad but if you want him dead then that's your choice I guess you do what you want you're the king of the gods and Jupiter is like listen I can let you save him to give him a little rest but I I can't let you spare him from his fate. Like, he has, to, he has to die. He has to die. I can't allow that. And you know, it's like, ugh, you're the worst pus- husband I've ever had and also the only husband I've ever had and that sucks in itself. You just don't love me at all. Before sending down an effigy of Aeneas to drive Turnus away from the battle. And the effigy leads him to one of the ships and Juno cuts it away while the real Aeneas is like yo where the fuck has Turnus gone he was literally just here five seconds ago and Turnus is like yo what the fuck I want to fight this battle this is so embarrassing everyone's gonna think I'm a coward and the ship takes him back to his father's kingdom so he can rest a bit meanwhile Mezentius who still exists is out here killing a bunch of dudes before he is also confronted by Aeneas and they start to fight and pretty soon Mezentius is losing very badly and he gets speared in the groin, which is just the worst place to get speared. And he's like dying. He is very mortally wounded because, you know, you get shot in the dick. It's going to make you bleed out a lot. I wouldn't know. I don't have one. Uh, and then his son comes in for the rescue. Yay. And Lausus leads the attack on Aeneas. And it's like, don't you dare hurt my dad. Uh, before Aeneas is like, yo, why do you want to buy die so bad? You're blinded by the love of your father spare yourself you, you're being dumb but Lausus just keeps on fighting before Aeneas finally stabs him with his sword because he's just had enough uh, and after he kills Lausus Aeneas just cries thinking about how much he loved his own dad that he would die for him and because he respects Lausus that much because he can also relate to really loving his dad who is now dead which probably makes him sadder 
He gives Lausus' body to his comrades to give to his father out of respect for his bravery. And while this is all happening, Mezentius has been asking about his son the whole time, being like, where is he? Is he okay? Is my son still alive? And then they bring back the body. And as you would expect, he grieves out of guilt because his son has died protecting him. He died because Mezentius couldn't defend himself. And also because he acknowledges that he has not been the best king and probably deserved to die more anyway because his people hate him for a reason, you know. Let's not forget all the shit he did to his people, like, tie them to dead bodies. I certainly haven't forgotten about that. <coughs> uh, so he gets on his old horse, Rabus, ready to die and heads for Aeneas and he is fuming, as you would be. And he calls for Aeneas three times before circling him, throwing all the spears he can before Aeneas eventually retaliates and strikes the horse down, which pins Mezentius beneath it. And Aeneas is like, where is all that courage now, old man? And Mezentius is like, listen, I am not afraid of death. My son has literally just died, but please at least protect me from my people who hate me and I know will probably mutilate my body and bury me with my son before Aeneas finally just gives him some mercy and kills him and save him, saves him from his misery. Wow, that was pretty fucking sad, huh, kids? <laughs> uh, and that's the end. It ends on that very depressing note, and I really can't make a joke about it, because it's... This is the only book that genuinely makes me sad. Because <laughs> it's just a lot, man. A lot happens. Um, So yeah, that's it for book 10 of the Aeneid. Hopefully the next one I can make more jokes out of. Probably not, because it gets worse from here, kids. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you next time for the next book of the Odyssey, which should be more fun, although they're going to the underworld, so prob probably not. And then the next book of the Aeneid, which is just as fun. See ya!